So everyone, welcome to Force Gray, both old players and new. Happy to have you with us. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to do some character intros here for you guys so we can get a bit of a, uh, an idea of both your visual and uh, personality descriptors. I uh, will go ahead and start over here with Utkarsh. You wanna tell us a little bit about Hitch? Hi guys, I'm Utkarsh, I play Hitch. I'm a sixth level rogue. I was fifth last season, but Papa got some experience <laughs> and I like sandwiches. I'm chaotic good, so I <laughs> ruffle some feathers, but then I smooth them out again, and I'm, I steal shit. Uh, Joe. Hi, <laughs> I'm Joe Manganello, and I play Archon. He's a red dragonborn paladin who was lawful good for his first three levels until he hit third level, and he was sucked back into the dark world of chromatic dragons <clears throat> and became a, a worshiper of Tiamat. And now I am roving the countryside with my new, beautifully painted mini. Thank you, Nathan Stewart. If you want to <laughs> zoom in on that, I don't know if you can get a little shot of that. He's wearing steeler colored armor because uh, he likes teams with lots of Super Bowls. And um, he also, if you haven't gone to projectalpha.com and seen the newest episode of Celebrity D&D, you should, and sign up for your membership there where you can watch, catch up on old episodes of Critical Role. But you can watch my episode with Matt Mercer where I tamed a manticore <laughs> named Chungo, <laughs> who is actually back in the basement of my bar chained up right now, uh, the Burning Cube, which is in my my regular game. Um, I couldn't bring him along because he's too dangerous and because Nathan Stewart is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, well, uh, Deborah, why don't you right. tell us a little about your character? Yeah, I am Jamila and I am human and uh, I was traveling with my parents in the trackless sea and we had a shipwreck just off the shores of Chult. So I washed up and I was raised by the local people there. So I know a lot about Chult, but I really long to, to like leave the island and get to the mainland because I've grown into this like super strong incredibly like confident woman who could just like you know destroy anyone in arm wrestling or thigh crushing you know things like that so um, <laughs> yep. a good person to have around um, I'm a barbarian you know so if things get rough I'd get a little enraged but uh, it should be helpful hopefully most of the time awesome thank you so much <laughs> yeah. and tell us a little about Tyrol a bit okay let's see so uh, I'm Dylan I play uh Tyrell Tall guy. Um, he's uh, he's a Furbolg Druid. He's six level and he's Circle of the Moon uh, because I like it to transform. Um, <laughs> and he is very naive despite being very old for a Furbolg. Um, he wanders around uh, on uh, geriatric feet um, and he prefers to turn into things like <clears throat> giant moles or uh, porcupines or toads of that sort. Um, he is neutral good, so generally he believes in the good in people until it's ruined by the rest of his party. <laughs> so. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Brian, you want to tell us a little about Calliope? Uh, yeah, I'm Brian Posehn. I'm playing Calliope. Uh, she's a six level bard, um, half elf. Uh, I'm super charismatic, as you can see. Yeah, boy. <laughs> uh, chaotic good, uh, entertainer, obviously. I have a repeater named uh, Sir Stabby Woundbringer IV. Uh, <laughs> and I look like Becky Lynch from the WWE, but uh, with, <laughs> with an eye patch. <laughs> Super kick ass. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into the story, beginning with our existing members of the team. That's so, us. That's, that, that's you. <laughs> so month, months have passed since the last endeavor. At this moment, dusk takes the skyline of Waterdeep, the sprawling city that stands at the height of civilization this side of the Sword Coast. Taverns and shops glow from within their shadows. Street lamps flicker and illuminate the evening clientele as they shift through the darkening streets. The sound of carts and hooves clapping stone accompanied by energetic chatter and the music of some distant street busker. Within the warm, noisy interior of the Grey Griffin Tavern in the Dock Ward of Waterdeep, Hitch and Tyrell sit at a table over empty cups and a hand of cards. A rather perturbed-looking sailor sits across the two of you, glaring over his own hand. A respectable pile of gold coins already stands piled between the three of you as Calliope returns to your table with three fresh flagons of some dark amber ale, one for each but the sailor in question. 
as you approach. Sorry, I said it The sailor kind of gives you glare. That's his back. You material. What do you have? Let's just say, and he takes five more coins and throws them in the pile. I've got enough to call. Call me? Um. What are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for this, I'm gonna say go ahead and just roll uh, 2d6. 2d6. All right. Find that. Liar's dice it is. <laughs> Seven total. He shows his cards. It's a little bit better than your hand. Turns to Hitch. Call. Cool. Okay. So, Mr. DM, because I'm Hitch and I got those sleight of hands that are <laughs> magical, I have sneakily gotten a better hand than him okay. through uh, devious means. Also, go ahead and roll 2d6. Okay. See, what, see what you roll. <laughs> So two, and then roll again. Three. Three. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check. So roll a d20. Add your sleight of hand skill. That's a big old one. Oh, 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 I told you this was gonna be a good one. <laughs> so as you as you look at your your card hand and kind of grin over to your compatriots across the table, <laughs> you lean back and slyly or you think slightly, slip your hand into one of your side pouches, at which point the sailor's <laughs> arm immediately reaches over and clasps your wrist and goes, what do you think you're doing? You're trying to cheat me, boy! And he stands up and pulls a blade from the side and goes, we got a cheater in the tavern! Hey, guy, he's reaching for a Kleenex. Nose is rough. <laughs> Make a deception check. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 11. 11 plus? plus which are... Plus deception, plus six, 17. 17. You kind of... This is the wrist. Sorry, bitch. It's okay. Bad allergies. Show me your hand. Son of a... <laughs> Call! And then I put, so I've got a much better hand than you. He looks it over. Actually, it doesn't look like that at all. Damn it! <laughs> Finally, get my cards back. And he starts scooping the gold over as this happens. The doors to the tavern <laughs> flip open, and the music that surrounds you kind of gets a little dim. You see localized people around you kind of glance over at the sudden loud burst of noise. You see there at the entrance a, uh, a cloaked figure, a commanding presence, a middle aged woman. Uh, with an expensive looking purple robe, cloak uh, wrapped around her shoulder, with uh, one side of it bearing the symbol of a white hand, its fingers pressed together. You recognize this attire immediately as one of the watchful order of uh, mages and protectors of the city, the ones that you've done some dealings with before when you were first brought to Vajira. Avajra. The din of the tavern continues to get more silent as this imposing figure has arrived. Uh, he whispers around, and the woman approaches immediately to your table. Tosses a scroll bound in black thread into the center of the wooden coins. Hitch, Calliope, Tyrrell, you are summoned to Blackstaff Tower immediately at the behest of the Blackstaff herself. I recommend you be on your way. She turns around and exits the tavern. There's a small pause. Well, that was convincing. <laughs> it's a very convincing entrance. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> the sailor at this point has finished scooping up his coins and goes, Well, good luck with that. Black stuff. I hear she's quite a handful. Anyway, drinks are on you. And he gets up and walks away. <laughs> um, I'd like to, I guess, open the scroll. Check it out. All right. As you open the scroll, it is a, uh, a summons to Blackstaff Tower immediately. It is written pretty in, straightforward in the, the classic D and D version of caps lock. It is just, <laughs> Come here now! It, it, it is you cannot have a stronger sensation that this needs to be taken care of. Anymore. You take a couple last drinks of the fresh uh, flagons that were brought by Calliope and make your way out into the evening uh, streets of Waterdeep. Beautiful. Well, now. first I had played "Don't Stop Believing" on the loot. Yeah. <laughs> Great. The <laughs> little song I just came up with. <laughs> a, a jovial atmosphere is brought as everyone, I mean, 
even in favor, and everyone knows, don't stop believing. Like this <laughs> yeah. is right, right. So this this just cross planar when it comes. And I to sing the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> do we know and where we all this sing place along. is, or it has, has sh- you you've been there just, once? Okay, uh, so we at, do. Yeah, af, af, after mm-hmm. your uh, your encounter with Stratovan's corpse and the uh, the. You, the the cl- collapsing castle you were introduced and inducted fully into Force Great upon return. How long is the journey from here to Blackstaff? Uh, Blackstaff Tower, it's maybe 20 minutes on foot. Oh, oh not it's bad. It's not too bad. bad. It's still in the same city. Snack? Yeah, it's in the city. It's in the same city. Okay. Um, so you guys make your way down the familiar path of Sword Street. You approach the looming dark image of Blackstaff Tower. Obsidian black and unnatural in shape, it's seemingly almost invisible against the Black Knight sky, were it not for your keen vision, you specifically. You show the guards at the gate the summons you are given, and you are allowed entry. The gate shifts open, and as you step beyond the perimeter walls of the grounds, you see a familiar old man in blue gold clothing pacing with almost manic energy. Oh boy. This is Jorman, the clerk of Blackstaff Tower, and his face lights up as soon as he sees you approach. As he rushes up, oh, You've come! Thank you, thank you. Um, the Blackstaff is waiting for you. Please uh, follow me if you don't mind. Jorman, you look great. Yeah. And I embrace Jorman tightly with love. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected, uh, but thank you. Uh, now, and he like slowly pushes you away from his form. Uh, there is no time for such pleasantries. Fair enough. Very awkward man. <laughs> Which one of us? <laughs> Both. No time. Both. Good, I'll go with that. <laughs> and he charges inside okay, the tower, and uh, as you come in, uh, into the interior, it leads you up the winding staircases that spiral up towards the upper chambers. The interior. Uh, is impossible in structure. You can see shelves that lay out over 20-foot drops. You can see doorways to nowhere. You can see uh, places where you're not even sure how you approach one of these hallways or entryways, which from the exterior of the tower, it looks like it's a pretty solid cylinder, but it seems to almost stretch out in limits, limitless expanses beyond some of these windows. It's it's a very unnatural interior in its construct. Only evil people live in places like this. Like, good guys live in houses in the world. Are you thinking that or saying that? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you're led to the upper chambers, which is adorned in a multitude of ancient tapestries depicting mythical stories of Faerun's history. Uh, and standing across the stone floor's massive glyph carving is a diminutive woman with olive skin, short black hair, and piercing indigo eyes. She walks towards you, accompanied with her rhythmic clacking of her silver shod staff against the floor. The staff is slightly blackened, as if by soot or antiquing, and atop of it lies a large axe head in the shape of a snarling wolf with green eyes. Uh, this is Vajra, the black staff, and your boss as Force Grey. As she approaches, her voice rings out Force Grey, <clears throat> I appreciate you making haste. Time is of the essence, and your skills are in dire need. What business you have unfinished, we here can attend to for you, for my task requires your immediate attention. Something is very, very wrong in Faerun. It began with omens of darkness and the dreams of diviners. Then reports came from high clerics across the realm of failing resurrection magic. Magic that grants the soul another chance to live. Zombies. (laughs) Or just bringing some of the high-masked lords back from a once terrible demise to live once again. They're discovering the magic that brought them back is now dwindling. Very powerful, very good, very righteous entities within our own city are beginning to deteriorate at a pace that we still cannot quite understand. So, the one percent. For now. <laughs> but imagine you being one who claims the, the ability to restore life to those who have been harmed. I dabble. What if that was suddenly robbed from you? And your druidic heritage had no more impact on the lives of those that needed it most. I would look a lot older. Hmm. Well, perhaps this may touch you as well, Tyr. Now understand. Through this, we made a tenuous alliance with the Harpers. We've learned that the the positive energy that suffuses our world, nourishes most divine magics, has become choked, diminished, siphoned. 
souls of the fallen are not passing on, but instead being pulled and fed to some terrible end. A device that we've only been known as called the Soulmonger. Now, the Soulmonger, we've found, has supposedly been hidden somewhere along the dense jungles of Cholt, buried beneath the lost city of Ogur. I task you, Force Grey, to travel to the far south, to the land of Cholt. Find a guide to ensure safer travel. Brave the dangers of this unbridled wild land. Find the lost city and the location of this soulmonger. And then destroy it? If you feel that is <clears throat> sufficient, however, I, I have heard that entities and individuals, heroes of old, and I mean no offense, of greater esteem than you, have okay. traveled into <laughs> these jungles and not returned. So, I leave it to your guidance and judgment as to whether or not you wish to seek further. Just the location of this should suffice. Mm. Now. We have come into contact with an individual who seems to have stumbled upon and barely survived an encounter with a possible structure, an underground tomb of some kind that may contain this soulmonger. A sitting, looming figure that is at this point you hadn't noticed stands up from a small stool. You see a heavily armored, dragon scales skinned figure step forward with heavy footfalls. <coughs> An imposing dragonborn, red of body, large, nasty looking axe at one side. This is Archon. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My old friend. Oh, what up, brother? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Oh, that hurt. That hurt my hand a lot. <laughs> Ah. Arkham, you will be accompanying Force Grey. You will do your best ability to show them through the dangers you've already braved and hopefully survive. Return with the information that you've gained so we can better understand what we're up against. So, just a question. You want to gather information about this object, not have us destroy it. Because, I mean, if it's robbing people of their good abilities, is it inherently bad? I don't think you understand the weight of the dangers this world faces. Fair. Very fair. And she, you know, she looks to be a, a young woman, but there is an ominous presence and a force of personality that is just frightful when she bends it towards you as a specific individual. <laughs> You cannot help Good but thing respect I wore my brown him. pants. <laughs> <laughs> Even those might not help you. <laughs> um, but her expression softens. She goes, I understand you are capable, but I wish not to send you to your doom. You will already be facing many dangers out there in the jungles. If you find the information, where it resides, and you are certain of how to get there, return. If you're feeling brave, well, may the gods look upon you. I come up behind her and put my arm gently around her. She takes the staff and slams your wrist <laughs> okay. to the point where your hand goes numb immediately and you swear you hear a snarl from the wolf head on the staff. I'm just gonna tell you it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> I appreciate that. No problem. Ouch. <laughs> Bef um, well, if we're going into this dangerous, dangerous uh, on this journey, is there anything you can give us? Any magic? You or? will be provided with some supplies. I have also chartered a ship that is ready to leave at the first light of dawn, called the Horizon Star. Ooh. Captain Jusin will see you to the city of Port Nyanzaru to find some aid. And from there, you will be on your own. Good luck, my chosen. As you guys complete your <laughs> evening's preparation, right. your rests, Somewhat intoxicated and to a mild hangover in the morning, the uh, the sunshine and kind of somewhat cloud-imposing gloom of the morning in Waterdeep 
greets you to the docks where you find the ship before you, the Horizon Star. Uh, Captain uh, Jusen greets you on board. You are shown to your chambers, and shortly thereafter, the ship sets sail southward towards the continent of Chult. Now, during this time, it's a little over a week's worth of travel, and the weather itself is spotty at best. About four days in, a storm begins to blow through, and the water's getting choppy, and you know, a number of you probably have to be careful about staying close to the edge of the boat. <laughs> but thankfully, the crew that runs this ship are very experienced. They've made this journey a number of times, and without any major issue, you make it towards the outskirts of the, uh, the actual continent. In the very distance across the horizon, you begin to see the top of Chult begin to break this dark shape in the distance uh, about midday or so, at which point you hear above <laughs> a voice from the crow's nest yell out, Land ho! Chult ahead! Friend, I, d I couldn't help but notice. You look a bit out of place here in Chult, am I right? We're looking for someone. Someone who knows these jungles. Do you happen to know anyone? Well, Barul is definitely You're not. hired. <laughs> 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 uh, 